Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel and today I'm going to discuss the core signals and systems and kind of go over what it actually is and what you should expect to learn from this course. So let's get started. First off, we want to ask, well, what is a signal? So a signal is a description of how one parameter varies with another parameter. And a system is any process that produces an output signal given an input signal. So now that we know those two different things, a signal and a system, we can now kind of address what exactly this course is about. So this course kind of just touches on the different um, signals and communications between machines. You have two different types of systems um, called a continuous system and a discrete system. There's no actual values for these signals. Uh, you can kind of calculate them and do transformations on continuous time systems such as Fourier transformations, uh, linear transformations, and various other ones um, in order to calculate the output signal of this system. So you have a signal, then you have a system, and then you have the output um, of that signal. And right here I can put a photo of the two different systems that I had discussed earlier, the continuous system and then the discrete system. So the signals and systems course is very important in engineering and computer engineering and especially electronic engineering. Um, mainly because it focuses on you know the processing of data, communication of data, um, speech processing, image processing, um, defense electronics, consumer electronics, like everything that deals with electronics and communication between them um, all involves signal processing and signals and systems, you know, that's, that's what it's about. So this course is a requirement as a computer engineer and electrical engineer. Um, I don't know if it's a requirement for computer science, mainly because, like I said, you're doing a lot of programming. Um, and you don't really have to deal with the hardware and the electronics and how they communicate with the software or anything like that. You're just focusing on like the programs and the applications within the software. Um, so I don't know if that's a requirement for computer science people. The different things um, you'll learn in this course are, like I said, the discrete time and the continuous time systems. You'll also learn how to do response and convolution on linear time invariant series. And um, I can go into detail about all of this, but it'll probably be way too long. So I could do another video if you want me to go into detail about any of these topics that I'm talking about in this one. You'll also learn about the continuous time uh, Fourier series and then the Fourier transformation, and both of them are for continuous time systems. Um, you'll also learn the differential equations or how to perform differential equations on these signals. Um, you'll learn block diagrams, system functions, and then the poles and zeros of each signal. Some other things you can learn are the Laplace transform and then the transform function for continuous time systems. You can also learn the Z transformation uh, transfer function for discrete time systems. And then finally, once you've learned the basics of all of these different transformations for the different systems, you'll learn the applications of these systems. I know there's a lot of like information that I just said and mentioned that it just might have gone right over your head. I know it did with me when I first started, but um, you know, a, a lot of it just has to do with basic, you know, if you know how to do um, calculus three with the integrals and then the differential equations and all of that, um, you'll, I think you'll be okay with this signals and systems, the only thing that's complicated about it is that there are no um, numbers that you can go off of. All of these transformations that I mentioned can be done without any numbers, like because it's a general signal that's being inputted into a system, whether it be discrete and continuous, that's the part that matters, and then you'll get a particular output for that signal. So that's the part that kind of gets confusing because you can easily get lost in the equations and the variables that are applied in these transformations. Also, um, to do these transformations and uh, like the Z transformation and the Fourier transformation, you'll need like to draw the graph of a signal. And this is by doing it by hand. If you were to do it by hand, which is what you'll probably be doing in the class, um, you have to draw the actual signal on a graph and I can probably show you an example of that. Um, and then once you do a Fourier transform, for example, you'd have to do particular steps for each signal and then based on the previous signal, you'll need to adjust it and it'll come out to, for example, this. I know it was really hard for me and difficult for me to do these Fourier transforms and Z transformations because 
you can easily get lost in like transforming you know one signal to another and then having to rely on that previous one and if you mess up it'll affect the uh, future calculations that you do so if you done a calculation you end up getting like a value of five instead of like four then that will affect your future results because of the actual equations that rely on it um, i don't know the actual equation for uh, you know, Z transformations or Fourier transformations off the top of my head, but I'm sure you could just look it up and figure out how you can calculate that out for a particular signal. So I kind of like to go over like not only what you will probably learn, but also um, how to prepare yourself for this class and how to actually be successful in this class. So for me personally, it was a really difficult course. Um, I struggled a lot, but what helped me was I just looked on um, YouTube videos uh, and the Khan Academy, I think. Uh, K-H-A-N, I've looked at their videos and the person who is narrating is very uh, good at it. They explain it very well. Um, I'm able to understand and follow what they're uh, you know, saying and explaining. So I watched their videos and you know, on top of YouTube videos, I didn't really ask the TA because they weren't much help. They weren't around very often. And then the professor, he just wasn't one of those good professors. He didn't really care about the students and he just wanted us to do the homework and the structure of the class was just kind of very vague and I knew I wasn't gonna get much information out of him, but it's okay because the YouTube videos helped a lot and they were the ones that actually helped me pretty much succeed in the class and once I understood what I was doing and how to you know, get from point A to point B, get from the input signal to the output signal, depending on the transformation that I needed to do, um, you know, I was able to do it pretty well and I did well on the exam. I think I did. Uh, either way, uh, I got average, even if I didn't do well, it was, it was average compared to the class and I think I got a B in that class. I know it sounds a, like a very scary topic and subject and it, it was and it was really intimidating at first. I had a lot of mental breakdowns and I just didn't know what to do but uh, once I figured out and kind of broke it down, you know, piece by piece on the different little things that I didn't know, um, I was able to understand how to do that. So this is just a general overview on what you'll learn in Signals and Systems. Um, and I can put the list right here that I just talked about, the different things you'll probably be learning in this class. And yeah, if you have any questions on any of these topics, uh, please let me know in the comment section down below and I can make another video about one of them um, in particular. So yeah, I hope you guys like this video. I hope you found it useful and thanks for watching. Bye.